Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. I worked on some printmaking projects recently that didn't quite work out how I wanted them to work out and instead of just scrapping the project I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about some different approaches and techniques that you might want to implement or think about if you've got an art project that's not quite working out how you want it to work out. A little while ago I started a dry point print using a technique inspired by something that I'd misremembered about Albrecht Dürer who was a German printmaker in the 1500s. When he was a kid he made a lot of silver point self-portrait drawings and somehow I'd warped this in my mind over the years into thinking that he'd looked at himself in a piece of metal and made dry point prints traced directly from his own reflection. Even though I realised pretty early that I had the details wrong, I decided to try my version anyway. I wanted to make a set of dry point self-portrait prints with a piece of copper, but it wasn't reflective enough, so I used some of these dry point plastic offcuts that I have instead. By the time that I'd finished making the plates, I was already feeling a bit despondent because I wasn't really convinced that they'd look good when they were printed, and the footage that I'd managed to shoot for the video was pretty average to say the least. went ahead and printed them anyway, trying a bunch of different inks and wiping methods, and I hated pretty much everything that I'd done by the end of the day. I was still kind of weirdly attached to this concept though, so I stacked my prints to dry overnight and I decided to have another go again the next day with some brand new plates and the ink and plate wiping techniques that I'd narrowed down as being the most successful from my first day of printing. I used a different, sharper dry point tool to make my new plates, hoping that some stronger marks would work better for me. I've never really had a huge amount of success with these plastic dry point plates. They're super useful for some things, but even though they're inanimate objects, I sometimes get the feeling that they know that I resent them for being made out of new plastic. Give me a bit of recycled rubbish to make a print from any day of the week. I did save these plastic offcuts from being thrown out, but still. I was pretty pleased though with how the plates were looking before I inked them up and I really hoped that the finished prints would work out a bit better on this second run. When the plates were done, I inked them up with some Charbonnel RSR stiff black ink and I used my tarlatan mostly to try and push as much of the ink into the grooves of the plate as possible and then I wiped lightly over the surface with a flat hand and a page of phone book. I wiped the excess ink from the edges of the plate with a soft rag. To get the amount of pressure that you need to print a dry point plate, you'll need to use an etching press. If you want to learn how to set an etching press to make a dry point print, check out the recent video that I made explaining that. And if you don't have your own press or access to an etching press in an open access studio, you can make your own press for making small dry point prints from a pasta machine. To make a dry point print, you'll need to soak your paper before you start printing. 
And if you want to see a few different ways you can do that, have a look at my preparing your paper for printmaking video. I'll have links to all these videos in the description of this one. Anyway, I printed the new plates with my etching press and my soaked paper, and it turns out that I still hated the results. They weren't any better than what I'd printed the day before, so I just added them to my stack of prints to dry overnight, cleaned up, and walked away for a while. I've learned over the years of trying lots of random stuff that sometimes I just need to let go of an idea and come back to it the next day or the next week or the next month even. If you do end up with something that you're just really unhappy with, which happens to everybody by the way, of course it's totally cool to completely scrap it and move on to something else entirely, but my personal preferred method is to just work an idea into the ground. I don't like to leave something on a bad note, I'll abandon a process if it's not working, but I don't like to waste materials, so I always try and think of a way that I can pivot with the things that I've already made. Usually that involves cutting up work into smaller and smaller pieces and making new things from them, which is a strategy that I highly recommend, but in this instance I tried something new. Before I go into detail on that, this seems like a good time to thank all of you who've joined me on Patreon. Every little bit of support really does help me keep making these videos better. I have a bunch of different reward levels on Patreon, including some where you get an original digital artwork to download and print every month. I also have original art for sale on my website, a bunch of reproduction prints for sale in my Redbubble shop, and digital files that you can buy and print at home on Etsy. All of the links will be in the description of this video. Getting back to this dry point project, I decided to scan all the prints that I'd made, and then when I'd loaded them into Photoshop I started experimenting with stacking all the images in layers, and bringing out different aspects using blend modes. Even though I didn't like the prints that I'd made as a whole, I did like different aspects of each one, and I felt like I could combine those parts I did like to digitally bring out the best in the images. It involved a lot of mucking about and fine-tuning each layer, and then when I was happy with where I basically had everything, I duplicated all the layers, flattened them into a single layer, then edited that again by adjusting tone, contrast, and playing around with different filters and stuff. I went through the same process with each of the four different prints that I made, trying out different layouts, ideas, and adjustments each time, and I ended up with four works that I'm really happy with. As self-portraits, they're kind of creepy and weird, which is an aesthetic that I'm 100% here for, by the way. They're definitely not something that I would have ended up with if I hadn't gone through so many different steps to make them. And I think that there's real value in that approach to art making. Sometimes it's good just to let go of the hopes and dreams that you had for a project and let it be what it wants to be. I could have abandoned this on the first day and made something different that I knew would work, but instead I persevered and I made something that challenged me instead. It can be really easy to get frustrated if you have an exact finished image in mind for your art and it's not working out how you want it to, but know that you can always change direction and find a new path to take. I'm going to stop talking now and let the video play out. I hope you get something out of it, especially if you've been struggling with a project or an idea. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. There are also links in the description for my Patreon, my Facebook, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.